Affectus Humanos is the title uh, of my speech, Effects in Dance, Theatre and Education. Three points I will, I have no um, PowerPoint, so um, I will um, say uh, what I want to, to um, refer. First, the first point will be, I will speak about pathos and response. So in the second point, the place of feelings. And in the, for the for third point, theater is the space of shared and uh, reflective activity. Effects such crying, laughing, shame, embarrassment and disgust and feelings like fear, anger, love, hate are not just what make the sparks fly in life but also in all forms of reception and production that concern theater or aesthetic experience. Even Aristotle was aware of this and described it in his Poetics when he spoke of the impact of effects. The performative is therefore the heart of ancient rhetoric in the theater. Much has been said within theater and pedagogical contexts about feelings, mostly understood as an inner disposition, but less, on the other hand, about effects effects as corporeal expressions in the sense that we encounter something that corporeally or vocally opens up a space of interpersonal interaction and communication. Instead, in the conventional sense, it is more about withholding them, suppressing or controlling them in life, at school or in the theater. Contemporary performance and pedagogical theater work are interested in going beyond the role of the body semiotic qualities, discovering it as a phenomenon and field of experimentation for a performative practice that is bound to the body and the sense. My lecture will use examples to reflect upon the ways in which contemporary performance art works with effects artistically and pedagogically. This analysis will be carried out against the backdrop of phenomenological and educational references, reflecting upon the paradoxes to which reconstructions are subject when viewed in terms of the phenomena that are inherent both to dance and effect as a fleeting singular phenomenon. In the following, I would like to refer some main figures and thesis of the theory by Bernhard Waldenfels, which are important for our discuss discussion and questions. To think pathos and response together, and don't understand, as the behaviorismus does, affection and pathos as a schema of impulse and reaction. First, Pathos and response. What in Greek is called pathos, or in Latin affectus, affectio, emotio, emotio, and passio, has a threefold meaning. In the first instant, it means an experience that befalls us, widerfahrenes in German. With Bernhard Waldenfels, the experience that befalls us is an occurrence, but even less, it is a person, it is is it a personal act or a subjective condition like we still assume today? Erwin Strauss takes sensing and finden as an event which belongs neither to objectivity nor to subjectivity since the process of sensing senses itself in and with the world. He differentiates between Gnostic directness toward and pathetic being struck by. Meloponti describes sensing as an original, pre-objective and re-subjective contact with the world, self and other. And it feels in such and such a way, or an it touches me, word correspond, correspond to the it perceives within me, that he contraposes to the subjective perceptual acts. That means, in a short sentence, 
Feelings are something that comes to us. Pathos is something that happens. It happens by something touching us, striking us, by something exerting an influence on us. It is not that pathos happens without our effort, but it goes beyond our doing by overcoming us. With Freud, we are not the master of our own house. Furthermore, pathos means something adverse, something that is allied with suffering, but also something that admits of the pre proverbial learning through suffering. Finally, pathos designates the exurbance, the Überfluss of passion, Leidenschaft, that leaves behind the habitual. Pathos is surprise par excellence, in a good way as in a bad way. It has an aspect of time. It always comes too early as that which we could overlook. And our answer always comes too late in order to be completely at the haze of the experiments. Kleist brings this idea up when he talks about the speech when a thought is coming up while speaking. Experiment, experience which comes from that which befalls us does not begin with itself, in the self-same, but from elsewhere in the alien. My second uh, point, the place of feelings. The theory of Weidenfels is also asking for the place of feelings as pathetic. He follows the idea that this place can be found neither in the soul nor in the spirit. The place is neither completely outside itself, like extended things of nature, nor completely within itself, like pure spirit. Their place is the lived body that sends it itself in and through sensing something else and someone else. One more player is our vulnerability. Sensitivity and vulnerability are inseparable. With Plessner, this lived body refers to itself, also der Bezug, by the same time withdrawing an Entzug itself from itself. For our, own, our context is furthermore interesting that the foreignness of one's own lived body makes us receptive to the foreignness of others. We are only able to be approached, touched, affected, in so far as we are never totally with ourselves. So we can say, with the expression of feeling, we enter an area where the experiments of one's own self and the experiments of the alien are interwoven. Behind this theoretical background, now I can come to my main theme. The third point, theater as the space of shared and reflective activity effectivity. To discuss the relation of pathos and response in contemporary dance and theater is an example par excellence. Theater is a place the attention is shared between performers and his spectator, spectators, we just see it by Milorau's example, activity and passivity, production and reception, the foreign gesture and my own gesture are interwoven. I have bring up you three examples to make this practical. In a contemporary dance theater piece for three to five year old children, we can observe how the process of being affected is transformed from being a strange action into an action that is their own. I propose that effects have the ability to set mimetic learning in motion. Speaking with Bernhard Waldenfels, this does not mean that somebody simply imitates in a mechanical way, for example, a strange movement, that the same thing emerges again through mere imitation. I'm pursuing the thought that when we let ourselves be carried away, also when we mitgerissen werden mit einer Geste, uh, without the heterogeneous being submerged within the homogeneous, something that is our own emerges from something that was strange. Minimax, this is my example now, 
with one musician and two dancers picks up on uh, and aestheticizes the ways in which children play. Please take note to the scenes in which we can see and uh, hear the children as they watch the performance as well as the end of the piece.
Yeah, what uh, must be mentioned here is that it's not a research film. However, it does tell us something about the question of reception and the significance of imitation for learning. Even while they are watching theater, the behavior of the children that we see here reveals that reception has both an effective and a responsive side to it. Inasmuch as children urge to mimetically implement that which they have seen and heard, preferably straight away, the relation between reception and production must thus be re-questioned as an intertwining measure. Watching does not just have a passive side, it has an active side as well. I come to my second example. It's an, uh, another uh, aspect I want now to discuss. By looking at Martin Nachbar's reconstruction, it's in a way a reenactment too, Urheben aufheben from 2000 of the dance cycle Affectus Humanus by the choreographer Dore Hoyer. He has a premiere 1962, to which title of this lecture alludes. The focus shifts to the question of the body as a repository of memory, Erinnerungsträger, and about the movements of human effects. Accepting that each affective or emotional process must be viewed as a complex phenomenon, both as a unique individual event and as a product of its historic and cultural context, raises the following questions. How does the tension between continuity and transformation appear in the reflective process of Nachbar's reconstruction. What kind of differences come about if a man reconstructs these dances and transports them into another time? You need some information. Urheben, Aufheben. Since 2000, Martin Nachbar has been engaging with German choreographer Dora Hoyer's 1962 piece Effectus Humanus in various contexts. The first version, Effects Rework, created together with Thomas Plischke and Joachim Gerstemeyer, toured through Europe and South America. Dora Hoyer was one of German's dance, excellent dancers and choreographers. Her works, which she created between around 1930 and her death in 1962, deal with some of the fundamental human effects, Affectus Humanus, is a series of five four-minute dances that each delve into one such effect. Desire, hate, anxiety, love, vanity. For, for Urheben, Aufheben, Martin Nachbar completed the reconstruction. He began in 2000 and, and integrated it into a lecture performance that focuses on the body as a repository of memory and inquires into the movements of human effects. What is special about is that he makes his issue of the reconstruction itself, dances it and verbalizes it. The question now is um, um, what actually happens in the act of remembering for him. This is uh, the specialty of this example. I give you first um, the old the old piece uh, Doro Hoyer did, and then you can compare it afterwards with the reconstruction of uh, Martin Nachbar. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
What you could compare in this, uh, both materials, 50 years are there between and more. What becomes clear in Napa's appropriation and reflection 50 years later is that effects must be seen as a unique individual events and products of 
their specific historical and cultural context. Nachbar's mimetic appropriation adopts the movements almost identically, but creates something new at the same time, because the remembering bodies are different bodies than those 100 years ago. He born in 1971, dances movements that Hoyer, born in 1911, developed with her body without being that body. Nachbar's approach does not try to hide this. On the contrary, for him, it is about bringing this disparity to a head. The reconstruction is shown in a different time against the backdrop of a different upbringing, different dance techniques. Nachbar has been trained in re release techniques and contact improvisation and different taste. In this way, he does not use any costumes, you can't hear any music. And in the scene that we saw here, he does not, um, the, the, the effect is that our attention is much more strongly directly towards the body. It's another understanding of body. In a visual sense and also acoustical, we hear the noises of the body, breathing, clacking of the feet. In these scenes, Nachbar invokes a two-fold absence. The absence of the body of Doro Hoyer and the absence of his own body, which changes in its encounter with Hoyer's body. In this way, a third, non-verbalized entity arises between the self and the other, which can only be articulated via the difference of two, two poles. Hoyer's phantasmatic body is repeated and invoked as an absent body. At the same time, Nachbar's own body distances itself from itself. For Nachbar, it is about the difference between the, the two bodies and about how Dore Hoyer's dances affect and move him and change him when they are repeated. Nachbar himself says, the fact that Dora Hoyer's interpretation of the affectus humanus takes on the function of an original that I'm using to orientate myself does not mean that I want to fulfill an ideal. Instead, I'm interested in traversing another that is foreign to me. This reciprocal traversal makes strangers family to one another. Other. Dances that make issue of effects therefore become effects themselves. Reciprocal affectation takes place and remembering becomes a kind of viral trans transmission. In German, Tänze, die Affekte selbst zum Thema haben, werden selber zu Affekten. Das ist ein sehr zentraler Gedanke. Gegenseitige Affizierung findet statt und erinnern wird zu einer Art Virusübertragung. That means, my last sentence, Movements, effects are located in time and in this way are an outline for the future. I thank you very much.